So if you never got your hands on a bottle of Thomas DeMonaco's raw gold, well, I think it might be a bit too late because stock is running out and there's hardly any left anywhere to be found. But don't worry, you're in luck because there's a new version of raw gold coming out very soon, within the month. And I'm gonna to talk to you about this new version of raw gold and also two additional fragrances that are launching from Thomas DeMonaco Parfums, Sol Solgado and Fuego Futuro. So yeah, they're, uh, they're definitely in new bottles. I'm gonna to talk to you about these three fragrances, their launch date, and also touch on a few additional fragrances that are also limited edition. Who knows, these will run out as well, just like the original Raw Gold. We've got Au Cœur and also Grand Beau. Anyway, find out about all of these fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. If you recall, I did a video in April of 2022 and how I excited I was for raw gold. It was exactly like the kind of fragrance I like. First of all, it did remind me of a combination of Killian's Gold Knight because of the honeyed touches. And it also reminded me a little bit of Ted Lapidus Pour Homme with that old school 80s vibe, still with honey as well. Very, very modern fragrance, but also, you know, a bit classic, which I really, really enjoyed. And what I really liked about Thomas Monaco Parfum's Raw Gold is the patchouli and how it plays with all of the other notes, including boozy notes, honeyed notes, resinous notes, woods, a bit of a barnyard kind of animalic edge wrapped into some amazing, amazing fragrance that I really couldn't get enough of. I wore quite a bit of it. Uh, this is how much I have left of my first bottle, and I did buy another bottle as well, and absolutely love it. But yeah, this version actually is sold out almost everywhere. You might be able to find a bottle somewhere, but um, I don't think it's much out there. And I actually was uh, visiting Montreal, and I went to a perfume shop there called Etiquette. They had just started selling the brand, and they only had Au Cœur and uh, Grand Beau. There wasn't any bottles of uh, raw gold. But as I said, there is a new version coming out and it will be launching along with the two additional fragrances middle of October, around the 18th. It's gonna have its debut in Paris. So in this video, I know it's a month ahead, the launch, but I'm gonna talk to you about these three fragrances and prep you guys for that launch when it's coming soon. So this is uh, raw gold, the new 2023 formula. Has it been changed? I I'll let you know. It has notes of patchouli, vanilla absolute, benzoin, siam, laotian oud, davana, oris absolute, suede, gayak wood, and cedar wood. So when you first smell this fragrance and you're not really focusing on the notes, there's definitely major, major similarities to the original. In fact, it's actually pretty much the, 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 the original fragrance, but it has been a bit toned down with its animalic touches. And if raw gold kept you from owning it, you might want to circle back to this new version now. It is definitely tamer with its animalic notes. And if you can get past those kind of barnyardy animalic touches, then I think you might actually really like this one. Because right now, with this 2023 formula of raw gold, they're definitely focusing on the patchouli with the vanilla. So big fan of patchouli, big fan of vanilla. My favorite note is patchouli, second favorite note is vanilla. It's a given that I would like this fragrance, right? But it also has benzoin. This is a really great resin that's kind of vanillic, a little smoky, sweet, and you know, not necessarily like uber sweet. And it's kind of used sometimes to substitute for vanilla to create a vanillic touch, but not to you know accentuate all its vanillic touches that you get with uh, the vanilla. But here, it's still acting like honey. Definitely there's a honey touch here, and I think it's the combination of the Vanilla Absolute and we've got the Benzoin as well. It gives you kind of a syrupy, ambery experience, acting like honey, but it doesn't have that very syrupy honey touch that the original does have. But you'll, you'll notice it, but if you're not really paying attention, the fragrance pretty much wears exactly like the original. If you were very sensitive to those animalic notes, you'll you'll no notice it. If you were very sensitive to the honey touches, you'll notice it. 
but in the end it's the same fragrance but what i like about this one it's a chocolate cakey patchouli but not necessarily acting like the chocolate cakey patchoulis that are very popular out there like reminiscence patchouli or something like psychedelic from javoy and things like that it acts a bit green and to me it hints at a little bit to Persephone's patchouli from Electimus, but not necessarily going that green because there's not a lot of greenness here. I think I'm getting the greenness from the Davana note, which is also, I think, contributing to a booziness here. So there's definitely a little green edge here, but not necessarily like Persephone's patchouli, which is a very green and honeyed patchouli or even greener, something like Tempo from Diptyque. So you have a really great fragrance here, really super delicious. The animalic touches are gone. It's been tamed a bit, but patchouli is king with vanilla and it's resinous, it's ambery, and it's super delicious smelling. So that's my thoughts on this new raw gold. Again, very similar. The animalic touches have been stripped away, not necessarily as honeyed as before, but super delicious smelling patchouli vanilla benzoin combo. And of course, uh, I really like the way it smells. I should also mention there are definitely some oody touches. It does get a bit powdery and that suede leather-like accord that comes in here as well to give you that bit of change when you're wearing the fragrance. But I'm not getting that lipsticky makeupy thing that was in the original here as much, if at all. But there's some faint things in there. And I think it's contributed by the Oris Absolute that created uh, that in the past, in the, in the previous version. But super amazing fragrance. Now you can enjoy it if you didn't like the animalics. Those are my thoughts about raw gold here. I do have a strip here. I'm going to spray it on and do a bit of a comparison for you on camera with the new version. Uh, this is the new version here. And, and then I've got the original here. And I'll let you know a little bit about the differences. So old, new. Yeah, there was the note of hay in the original. And I think that's what gave it that bit of barnyardy animalic twist. That's gone. In this, I'm not getting that kind of hay grassiness that I'm getting in the original. So if that's what turns you off, check out this new raw gold. It's, it's really, really great. And again, it's, it's for a patchouli lover and that whole combination of vanilla and patchouli together. Wow, it's so intoxicatingly delicious. I absolutely love it. All right, along with the relaunch of Raw Gold 2023, we've got Soul Solgado here. I've been saying it's the year of this note and the year of that note. Now I'm going to say it's the year of Linden Blossom. So I'm seeing fragrances pop up with this note of Linden Blossom. Absolutely in love with this note. Such a great note ever since my experience in France, getting out of an Uber car and smelling that flower in bloom in the air. I'm obsessed with this flower now. So Linden Blossom, I believe, grew, like blooms in June, not necessarily spring like other spring flowers do. So I don't know if I consider this a, a spring flower, but I think it's May, June when it kind of blooms and you can smell it in the air. But this Sol Solgato, it's Linden Blossom with Mimosa. There's salt, sandalwood, smoked vanilla, ambergris, skin musk, heliotrope, cotton flower accord. So for me, the heliotrope, Mimosa, Linden Blossom, very powdery floral notes. Mimosa and heliotrope especially. And Linden Blossom is a yellow flower in, in, in addition to the Mimosa. But Linden Blossom has those greenish accords that you pick up when you smell it. Linden Blossom, Lime Blossom. It's such a unique and distinct smell. It does smell a bit like Mimosa, but it's different in that it's it's just such a unique smell. It has a very baby-like uh powdery kind of a smell. I don't know where I get that from, but it's actually like full on in your face in this new fragrance from Thomas de Monaco Parfums called Sol Solgado. But along the way, you'll experience salt. Now the salt kind of tones down a lot of the sweetness and Linden Blossom Mimosa Heliotrope does get sweet. And so the salt actually tones it down. Along the way, you'll experience some ambergris as well. It does throw in a bit of a beachy vibe, but not necessarily like uber beachy, but you've got something salty marine-esque floating in here, lightly animalic from that ambergris. But 
It's skin musks as well. And then of course, loads of powdery touches from Heliotrope Cotton Flower Accord. This is a very powdery fragrance and actually it wears delicious on me. And also I should say, this definitely has the Thomas de Monaco DNA in that it's got this kind of a golden touch to it. And I usually think of raw gold with its honey touches and that whole golden thing comes up, the theme. And I get that here as well, not necessarily uh, very prominently, but it's here. And for me with this fragrance, it's late in the day. It's starting to cool off in the summertime. And so you've got this kind of a golden glow in the air with this intoxicating smell of all these beautiful flowers. Really great fragrance. I like the addition of the salt here. It tones down everything, including the vanilla, and it creates this kind of a sweet and savory wear with all these woods and flowers and musks and everything. This is definitely gonna be very popular. Does it remind me of uh, Occur? No. I don't know if it's a similar idea. Not necessarily. The flowers in both of these fragrances are different. This Linden Blossom is a very, very distinct smell. Uh, once you familiarize yourself with it, you might either be addicted to that smell or or not, but I absolutely really love this smell. It's just something very gentle about the smell that I actually really like about it. But either way, those are my thoughts on Soul Solgato. Let's quickly smell it on camera as well. Yeah, that golden smell, like a honeyed, ambery, like a honeyed ambery kind of a backbone to the fragrance that's you know prominent in raw gold is here but not necessarily as potent as that but in here in this fragrance i'm smelling linden blossom amazing amounts of linden blossom and mimosa and as i said linden and mimosa kind of do have similarities but not quite they do blend really beautifully together and that salt comes in tones thing, things down, even though with the addition of that smoked vanilla accord that's in here. Super amazing fragrance. This is a really great creation that I hope you guys get your nose on. This is Thomas de Monaco's Soul Solgato. So now on to Fuego Futuro, this one right here. So initially I got to preview these fragrances last March during Exence. And initially, this one was my favorite between the two new fragrances, but now it's reversed. The more I wore this one, it's not that I didn't like it, but I think the smokiness might be a bit off-putting, but still very enjoyable fragrance. What I like about the Fuego Futuro is that sage note. And there's a reminder of late autumn mountains here in California, Northern California, where you're walking, maybe hiking these hills. And you know, we've got a lot of wild sage growing and they do bake under the sun and they do release a fragrance fragrance and I feel like this is kind of carried over into this fragrance with this kind of an experience. But Fuego Futuro features notes of smoked sage, mate absolute, timut pepper, ash, Alaskan cedarwood, sandalwood, hay absolute, and elemi resin. There's a lot of different things in here. The sage in this is so, so authentic, really a late autumn heat baked sage smell is captured in here. Perfectly, perfectly. Very spicy, very grassy. And then of course you got the smoked touches and the ash in here. Maybe it's the ash that's turning me off a bit. I'm not sure, but I initially liked this one a lot, but Sol Solgato won me over. But I think this is definitely wearable if you like smoky, ashy fragrances and fragrances that kind of go into that whole aromatic green herbal direction of notes like sage and mate absolute. The Timut pepper has a bit of a grapefruity edge to its spiciness that's here. And then the rest of the notes are very woody. And then you've got that hay absolute, which creates that kind of grassy touch, a bit sweet, lightly animalic, because sometimes Hey, Absolute can rub me the wrong way. It can come off a bit animalic. In this case, I'm not getting animalic touch as much because I think the ash and the smokiness kind of tones anything like that down and I'm not picking it up even on my skin. I do enjoy this fragrance, don't get me wrong, but I much prefer Sol Solgato. But I think this will have an audience, especially if you like smoky, you know, herbal, aromatic, green uh, type of uh, fragrances. Definitely the smell is... Maybe like a, the hills catching on fire and it's just on fire new and, you know, whatever's on the hill has not burned yet, but it's smoking and there's these really overgrowth of wild sage and, you know, aromatics and herbs that are on the hill. That kind of a smell is in here, but it's not necessarily uber burned. It's there, 
but uh, it's creating a very smoked vibe in this fragrance. So let me go ahead and smell that on camera for you as well to let you know. But do, do want to let you know once again, the sage note in here is so authentic and it really, really reminds me of me hiking through the hills of Northern California in the autumn season and smelling the air after the, you know, the sage is baking under the sun. Very much. It's the, the herb is right in my face right there. And it's the most prominent note. And it's the kind of uh, herb I'm always obsessed with smells when I walk in, you know, uh, hills and tra trails and things like that. If I see an a kind of a vegetation that I know has a fragrance, I'll pick it up and, you know, rub it in my fingers and smell it. And this smells like that authentic smell when the oils are released, when you're rubbing the, the herb or the leaf or something. Uh, very much like that. And I think it's a great scent. Definitely great. But for me, between Sol Solgado and Fuego Futuro, I much prefer Sol Solgado, but uh, Fuego Futuro is definitely a very wearable fragrance, especially if you like smoky, herbal, green, uh, you know, aromatic fragrances. So that's my thoughts on Fuego Futuro. And those are my thoughts on these three fragrances. I'm going to talk to you about the current existing original fragrances in the bonus section, so stay tuned for that. But let me uh, know what you think about these new fragrances from Thomas de Monaco Parfums. What are your thoughts on the redo of Raw Gold, the 2023 of version now that uh, you know, they've, it's been toned down with its animalic touches, but it's still patchouli with vanilla and benzoin. Really, really great stuff. You should get your nose on it. But these are debuting or launching in Paris middle of um, October, and I believe it's the 18th, and they should make their way out to all the retailers sometime after that. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Let me know if you're a fan of the original Raw Gold. Let me know if you have a bottle. Let me know if you're able to find a bottle. I think our ZGO store here in San Francisco might still have a few bottles. I have it linked in the info box. And then let me know your thoughts on what you think about Raw Gold, the new version, and what do you think about Sol Solgado and uh, Fuego Futuro. I'd like to find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, I want to talk to you a little bit about Ocur and uh, Grand Beau, this one right here. They're still selling, but they are limited edition. So just like uh, Raw Gold, they might disappear one, one day in this version. And who knows if they will come back or if they'll be completely, you know, gone. But Ocur, between Ocur and Grand Beau, or Grand Beau, I much prefer Ocur. I really, really love this. And once again, with the Ocur, you do have the kind of golden honeyed ambery base that has been carried over from raw gold, but not necessarily as honeyed and ambery as raw gold, but it is here. There's sweetness here. And it has magnolia, pink pepper, ambroxan, rose, tonka, musk. But it's super, super great smelling floral note. That uh, magnolia, no magnolia note is white floral, a bit lemony, but not super, super like white floral in your face. Magnolia is a bit subtle. It doesn't have that intensity that tuberose, maybe jasmine and uh, gardenia has. But makes it a very wearable, a bit fresher than raw gold and just a really gorgeous fragrance. So that's my thoughts on Ocur. Again, these are limited edition, they're still selling, but we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And then finally, Grand Beau, this one right here. This is the latest release from this house until these three new fragrances come out, the, the redo of Raw Gold and Sol Solgado and uh, Fuego Futuro. This one actually, I it's a very vegetal smelling fragrance for me. It's the Angelica Root creates this, and I feel like there's galbanum in here. So I like fragrances like this, but it became a bit one-dimensional for me. It does lean more masculine. I feel like Raw Gold is definitely very unisex, with Ocur maybe leaning slightly uh, feminine, and then Raw Gold, I mean, I'm sorry, Grand Beau, leaning way masculine, if that makes sense. But it's Vetiver, Angelica Root, Juniper Berry, Ambrette, 
pine, olibanum. So it does have musky touches for sure. It's very green, it's very aromatic, somewhat herbal and vegetal. There's woods and spices in this. And of course it does get musky. Ambrette creates this muskiness, but I feel like the angelica root is definitely dominating here. And even though there's no mention of galbanum, I feel like there is some. It does hint at something like French Lover from Frederick Mall. So if you're into that kind of a fragrance, you might want to look into this. It's very rooty, like the rooty. Uh, so the vetiver has a very rooty touch, very grassy and rooty at the same time. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Grambo. And uh, again, not sure how long these will be around. They are definitely limited edition. And so uh, just wanted to highlight them as well. But the only thing is you might not be able to find raw gold. As I said, when I was visiting Etiquette store in Montreal, they didn't have any of the uh, raw gold, the original, but they did have those two fragrances. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.